you're looking from this circuit and you're watching the screen, what you see center, this is right now point. So if you look at the center, it will be bright. Although I'm drawing with you know, uh, black marker, but consider it as bright. This is central bright. It will be very bright. Okay? Then you will have dark. Dark field will be after this and then you, there will be location where you have again bright. Bright. This is uh, first bright. This is central bright. And then you have second. And slowly and slowly it will start taking curves as you move away. Okay? Like this you will see the pattern. Okay, but if you keep your Y less, you can see that approximately these lines are straight. Fine. So distance between two bright fringes is this. Where will the dark fringe? Is this completely dark between these two? These two uh, bright fringes. Is it completely dark? No. The center line will be completely dark. This dotted line will be completely dark and then intensity will gradually fall. Sorry, gradually increase towards the bright. Are you getting the point? Between two bright fringes, between two bright fringes, intensity will gradually fall to zero in between. See, you know what? Intensity, you remember 4 I naught cos square 5 by 2. Okay? So there will be a fixed location where cos square 5 by 2 becomes zero. And there will be fixed location when cos square 5 by 2 becomes 1. Between 0 and 1 also, there are so many points. Ready? Between maxima and minima, there are in between so many points. But then if you talk about only bright and dark, dark will be exactly in between the two bright. And between dark and bright, the intensity will gradually change. Are you getting this point? Okay? So, the way fringe width is defined, it is distance between either two consecutive dark fringes or two consecutive bright fringes. Are you getting it? Fringe width is a distance between two consecutive bright or two consecutive dark fringes. Any doubt about this? Alright. So, can you find out how much is the fringe width? How much is the fringe width? Fringe capital. Fringe is this. This thing is fringe. This thing. Fringe is right. So, so lambda D very See, you will get something like this. You, this is completely dark. If, uh, I mean, center is completely dark. And then the shades of grey. And then there will be one very bright line. You know? One very bright line, I am not able to follow it. Consider these two black, completely black. Center is completely black and then slowly it goes and center line is very bright. So like this alternate patterns. Black white Huh? Black white black white. Black white, black white. So and the dark spot, the darkest, you are the brightest or you are the darkest? As in what the dark flesh, you said it's oh, What I said? Completely bright will be between two completely dark, exactly in between. And completely dark will be exactly in between completely bright. So intensity of bright, uh, so intensity of dark reduces as you go away from central uh, fringe. There is no fixed thing like that. Don't create rules in your head. Just follow the laws. Okay, Ima keep imagination in following the laws. Don't start imagining the laws. Okay. So how much is the fringe width? See, this is nth bright fringe. Nth bright fringe is n lambda d by d. What about n plus one nth bright fringe? N plus one times lambda d by d. So distance between them is fringe width by definition. So y n plus one minus y nth is lambda d by d. 
So this is the fringe width. Beta is it is represented as. Can you find out fringe width using the dark formula also? You will get the same thing. Okay. Do it quickly. Done? You get the same thing. So this is nth dark fringe, n plus 1 dark fringe will be n plus 1 plus left 1 by 2 left divided by d. So when you subtract, you get the same thing. Lambda d by d. Any doubt? So we have defined fringe width and we have uh, found out locations where bright and dark will be. Okay? There is something also, th th there is one thing which is called angular width. Okay? Angular width of the fringe. It's like how much angle a fringe width has this angle. Getting the point? Okay? See, this is very near to the center line. I can say fringe width divided by capital D is the angular width. Getting it? So, angular width, write down, angular width of the fringe is fringe width divided by capital D. This will be equal to lambda by small d. Why we are finding angular width? Because see, what happens when you move this screen away, the fringe width increases. It depends on capital D also. Okay? Ready? But angle will not change. Angle will remain this much only. As you move away, angle will slightly open up like this. Fine? So fringe width, sorry, the angular width is the measure of how it, I mean, what is on this set. It is independent of where you put the screen. It should not depend on the screen. Whatever you are finding, the experiment should not depend on the screen, ideally. Fine? So fringe width, which is angular fringe width, is a better representation of the experimental outcome. Okay? Now what we do now, we will modify this experiment and we will discuss some, uh, the, the kinds of scenario you may encounter in the Young double sheet experiment. Okay? Hmm. Sir, angular width will only, uh, angular width will only give you the thickness of the uh, right fit and the top. Hmm. You don't tell you the distance from the central axis. Even the fringe width also doesn't tell you the distance from the central axis. It's just width of the fringe. Okay? Draw this Young's double sheet experiment again. This is Young's double sheet experiment and these two waves, they meet here. Okay? This is distance D, capital D as in, and uh, this is distance small d. When these two waves start from slit S1 and S2, we are assuming there is no phase difference. Getting it? Now, we have found out the path difference L1 minus L2 using the Pythagoras theorem. Fine? But then, you will soon understand that is not a generic method for this particular case. Okay. So, can I have a simpler method which is scalable or which I can use again and again? Okay. So, in pursuit of that, we can use trigonometry also over here. Now, if d is very large, if d is very large compared to small d, can I say that these two waves are meeting at infinity? I'll say that. Okay? So, if these two waves meet at infinity, what can I say about these two waves? The, these two lines? They are parallel. Fine. So, I am assuming these two lines to be parallel. Now, if you have two parallel lines, one is this, another is that, how do you find the difference in length? See, one point is same for both of them. This is that point. Are you getting it? This is that point which is same for both of them. The, these two points are different. Those are those two points. They are parallel lines. So how do you draw? How do you find out the distance or difference in the distance they are traveling? How do you do that? Sir, so we can make an angle uh, running from the center of the... No, no. Here, here. Intermediate. How will you find out difference in length between these? 
these two. Then you drop a perpendicular now, and then you just measure the distance. Is it it? So how do you measure here? So we will drop a perpendicular like this and then we will measure only this much. This is the path difference. Get it? So if this is theta, if this is theta, how much is this distance? This is small d. This distance will be d sin theta. Getting it? Now I have to bring in y in the equation because I want part difference as a function of y. Then only I'll get the value of y for which constructive and destructive difference happens. Okay. So for that you need to do a construction over here. You connect center line to this point P. Fine. Tell me what is this angle? Huh? How much is that? This is 90 degree. This angle is 90 minus theta. So this is theta. Fine. So this is also theta. Get it? Yes. Now for y to be less, if y is less, then I can say theta is also less. Got it? So sin theta, I can approximately write as tan theta. This we have done in the ray optics, text, left and right. Okay. So the path difference which was equal to d sin theta becomes equal to d tan theta. And d tan theta from this right angle triangle is d into y by d. Fine. Same thing we got earlier also. Fine. So like this, if you find the path difference, you drop it perpendicular. Okay. So this is the way you can do the numericals also every time. Fine. So do not remember any formula. Always start from here, dropping perpendicular and finding the path difference like this. Okay. Any doubt? Nothing.